give you a much better view from up here on the uh, rooftop. So welcome to the next episode of Exploring Northwest Myanmar. I'm Joko and uh, today we are in the town of Kata. Kata is, or is it Kata? I don't know. Anyway, it's famous for being the setting of George Orwell's book Burmese Days. His first book and was based upon his experiences working and living as a, as a policeman here in this town. And I'm reading the book as I'm here. And so I feel like I'm like living, or I can see where... <laughs> so I can like, I, I, I know the places he's talking about. We're gonna go see some of those today. This feels like a real old style Burmese tea house. Uh, because, I mean, look, all of the tables are wood, no little plastic stools. Maybe I should rent a horse for this journey. With all those kids dressed in their finest, and then this procession here. Could be a monk initiation ceremony. I'm not sure. Dust your books. Dust the books. This house here is where George Orwell lived when he was here. Um, well, probably not the same house, but the same site. That house doesn't look like it could last, you know, 80 years. Um, now there's an actual still, there's a policeman living there. 15, 15, 1915, 1947. 1924, these were established. Tennis courts. Tennis courts played a big part in the book. This is what the expats did. Mmm. Yeah, some food. Yeah. Now the kids learn to play tennis here. Now this is the house he was purported to have lived in, but that's in dispute because, I mean, look at the size of it. It's huge, it's, it's a mansion. There's no way a junior police officer in his early 20s, even being an Englishman in Burma, would live in such a palace. So, George Orwell did not live here. There's certainly no signs or anything. They're really missing the, the, the opportunity for some true literary tourism, some like George Orwell tours. None of that is here, none. It's almost Orwellian. I mean, how many authors have an adjective named after them? I love banyan trees. They're so beautiful. place of honor, but um, I just get pulled in and like, oh, you have to join. I, I don't know what that was, <laughs> but yeah, the, the snacks were delicious. Hi. The 
fed you? Ooh. Sunday drive on a Monday. Yes! On a dark desert highway! Yeah, yeah. Cool wind in my hair! Yeah, yeah. Okay, I go! According to Google Maps, there is no road on this bank of the Irrawaddy River. But that doesn't really seem possible. How could there be no road on the bank of the mighty river? But that's why we have to cross the bridge. Anyway, and that's why we have to cross the river tomorrow. But this looks like a road. I just don't know where it goes. As I noted at the time, it was really strange when I got pulled into that monastery and that reception that was happening because just minutes before I had finished reading this part of the book in Burmese days. Again, in the book it happened in a bend in the road. I was at a bend in the road on that very same road, the river road. There's only one river road. And uh, I hear some music, just like in the book. And I go, oh, what's going on? Let's check it out. Let's just check it out from the periphery. And I get to look in, and this woman grabs me by the elbow and says, you come, come, please, come in, come in. And then she sits me down, well, not in a position of honor. It was over against one wall. <laughs> no one bugged me or anything like that, but um, it was kind of ironic because it's sort of like a similar thing that happened in the book happened to me in the very same spot as in the book.